Now, I just want to introduce, introduce uh, Sarah Goodwin. And Sarah is the um, uh, Manufacturing Growth Manager covering Essex for the Manufacturing Growth Programme, uh, which is a specialist support service for manufacturers. So if I hand over to Sarah, do you want to just pick this one up, Sarah? Lovely. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks for asking me on today. Um, if you are a manufacturer, um, an SME manufacturer, um, there's a possibility, there's, we kind of work in a twofold way. We have um, the diagnostic side, which people can pick up whether or not they want to access a grant. And that is basically Growth Mapper, which has been specifically designed for manufacturers. Um, and the client will get a 20 page report. From that diagnostic, um, myself in Essex will speak with the business and work out what's, what's the best way forward. Um, obviously, some businesses know exactly what they want, that they want the grant funding towards a certain project. Sometimes that opinion changes once we've um, been through that process and had a um, good discussion or two. And then we can go forward as onto what we call a, a funded project. Now, that historically, as long as we've been going, has been called an improvement project and is about business growth. Um, in the current climate, we're, we're calling it a safeguarding project as well now because um, our expectancy probably a year or so ago would be that the client would be able to prove that they're going to grow from the grant, um, that they're going to create jobs, um, something innovative, a new service or product. At the moment, we're saying, well, that could be safeguarding the business. So we're happy to, to do a grant on the basis of that. So I did say in short, didn't I? So in short, um, a business can receive 33% of a, a, a funded project. Now, there's lots of examples of that. And obviously, if anybody wants to connect with me, um, I can give them a full rundown of the kind of things we can support. But they would be things like if you want to use somebody externally for marketing, business strategy, projects for um, accreditation, such as ISO, where you would need a consultant to come in and help you through that process, you can potentially receive 33% of that. At the moment, our projects are capped at a 5K project. Um, so you'd get 33% of that, but you can do two of those projects. Um, so then that makes it quite a, a good um, f amount of funding for the business. We do have some capital funds, but they are smaller than our consultancy funds and they're on a case by case, basically, basically. You know, they would be for things like machinery, equipment, um, and again, 33% of that. Um, and it depends, they can, they can have more than the 5K on that uh, project value or machinery value, I should say. I think that's it in short for us. From what Mike was saying about, we, we do also do a barometer report um, every quarter in conjunction with SW Mass. And that's just come out, literally I've been sent a copy late last night and it takes opinions from manufacturers. So the clients that myself and my colleagues um, work with all year round, thankfully take time to fill this in every quarter and nearly 300 took part on this one and it's mentioned um you know lots of people have been mentioning complications with export and import and less than a thir third of those people feel they're getting the right support in terms of advice about that so i think things like today are really important for businesses going forward and so um i hope there'll be many more of these type of things where they can receive advice and, and have Q&As. Okay, thank you, Sarah. And it's important to remember that the whole point of having Sarah come on and, and Richard, who you'll hear in a moment, is that, you know, there is money available. There is grant support funding out there. You know, manufacturing has still got a, a future in this country and most definitely, um, you know, we can help drive that forward. I'd like to introduce Richard Melchek now. He's, he's an innovation expert specialising in taking great ideas to market. He helps businesses obtain early stage funds, government grants, tax credits, private equity, 
to finance R&D projects and business development for leading edge innovations. And I asked Richard to come on and, and talk a little bit about the difference between R&D grants and R&D tax credits. Yeah, thank you, Mike, and, and thanks for the invitation to, to come and speak. Um, so yes, R&D grants and R&D tax credits are, are both forms of state aid uh, intended to help manufacturers to in, invest in new products. Uh, they work in different ways and they're sometimes confused, uh, sometimes both referred to as grants. Uh, and hopefully I can clear up some of the, the, the confusion and perhaps give some insight into, into what's involved. The key differences between grants and tax credits are that uh, grants are forward-looking, tax credits are retrospective. Grants are intended to, to uh, support a future project uh, that you would like to invest in, whereas tax credits tend to kick in once you've spent the money on R&D. The other key differences are that uh, grants tend to be limited in size and budget, uh, depending on the, the com particular competition call, whereas tax credits are unlimited. You can claim for virtually any amount. The, the limit is, is set by how much you've spent in the last year or two years uh, on your research and development. And secondly, the amounts uh, of support vary as well. For tax credits, they're typically falling between 25 and 33% of qualifying costs. The difference depends on whether you're in profit or, or not. Whereas in grants, the, uh, the, the, the percentage of support can be anywhere between 25% and 70%. Generally, the, the percentage varies on two dimensions, one being the, the stage of development. Uh, so earlier stage, riskier projects get a higher degree of support, and they also vary on size of business. So smaller, Micro enterprises get a lot more support than a large enterprise, but the, the percentage will, will vary depending on the particular competition. The other key difference is that there is limited funding for grants, uh, whereas tax credits is a, is a benefit that's available to, to all manufacturers. Um, there, there are no real limits to it. With grants, the, gen the application process is, is run through a competition. Essentially, there is a limited amount of funding, a number of applications are invited and it's the very best that, that gets supported. Whereas in terms of tax credits, you can apply at any stage, often after the financial year, and uh, if you, you're entitled to that, that funding, you, you, you simply get it post application. Just to sum up, uh, grants are generally best for game changing type of innovation. And that's because of the competitive nature of the application process. Clearly, the, the more exciting, the more game-changing that a proposition is, the more likely it is to be funded. If it's so, so they're looking for revolutionary rather than evolutionary solutions. On the other hand, tax credits will apply to any qualifying R&D activity. And it is possible to have both grants and tax credits on some projects. Obviously, if you have a grant, uh, it can impact the uh, tax credit amount that you get because in a sense, you're getting two amounts of state aid. So in summary, if you're doing truly disruptive technology, something that is game changing, you would be able to apply for R&D grants that could be worth up to a million pounds towards your project. So R&D grants are more suited to game-changing tech, uh, whereas tax credits will apply whatever you're doing. The other thing to bear in mind is that grant applications, uh, you know, for this valuable innovation funding are really competitive. So do get expert help when preparing your proposal. Okay, well, thank you very much, Richard. And, and hopefully that will give uh, you a little bit of a view of how you can gain some funds if you have an innovative project or if you just need to develop your business, there's two different options there through um, the Manufacturing Growth Programme or through Innovation Grants. But don't forget, um, you know, if you have been undertaking research and development and you're not sure whether or not you can get R&D tax credits, do talk to a specialist who can help advise you whether or not you have a claim, because it could really help be the cash that flows into your business, that keeps your business alive and keeps you growing 
um, and you know growing forward in the future. So thank you all for coming on to the webinar this morning. Um, the webinar will be recorded, it is being recorded and will be published on our website shortly and hopefully that has been of help to you. So thank you very much. <laughs>